Hi, I'm Brian Reed. This beautiful creature is Brenda Lee. Together we make up horses all the way home. And today we're here to talk about an interview that Jennifer Oikel did with Wendy Golding on co-creative facilitation with the horse. Co-creative facilitation with the horse. Working with the horse to create. Where does creativity happen? Well, before we get into that, Wendy explains it a couple of very practical steps before we get into the, as Wendy would say, the woohoo stuff. You know, the woohoo, spiritual chakras, energy waves, all that kind of stuff. As facilitators, when we're working with the horse, Wendy gets very specific. Do you ask the horse or do you make the horse? Do you ask the horse for its opinion? Do you ask the horse for permission? Do you ask the horse for permission to work in a creative way? Do you listen? Wendy goes on to talk about it's not horse whispering, it's horse listening. I think it is horse whispering, except it's not us whispering to the horses, it's the horses whispering back to us, and indeed, Wendy, that requires listening. So horse whispering is the whispers that the horses are whispering back to us, but we have to listen not only with our ears and with what we see, but with our imaginations, and you go right into that. The woo-hoo stuff about using our imagination to clear and clean our chakras, and Wendy will go in in depth about the different chakras and what they represent, the energies throughout the body. And anybody who's listening as a facilitator that feels a little uncomfortable with the woo-hoo stuff or wants to know how do you handle the woo-hoo stuff with clients. When you're saying, oh, you're going to stand next to the horse and my energy is going into the horse's energy and I've cleared my energy as a facilitator and I've asked permission and I'm asking the horse's opinion and I'm visualizing it in creativity and I'm using intuition to bring this energy from the collective consciousness of the horse to help you with your energy blocks. And the client is saying, what? Are you what? I just wanted to see what this horse stuff was and how it could help me and my husband or my wife get along. You're like way... For those people who are there, whether you're a facilitator, whether you're a client, I want you to think about something. You'll hear people talk about the collective consciousness of the horse. Horses actually talking to other horses as a group and the herd dynamics working together. You're going, how can that happen? Well, today, a friend of mine did a go-to-meeting session with somebody. What is that? Well, you stand in front of this LED, liquid emoting diode. It eliminates a light called the laptop computer. And it eliminates an image of somebody who is in Florida wearing Rhode Island. And that image is sent through the ether, collected, and the light is formed in recognizable ways. And somebody else could listen in on that. And three humans could have their collective consciousness happen and a thing called an iPhone, or go to meeting, or Skype. And all of a sudden, somebody from another planet will go, what are you doing? Well, we're getting together and we're collecting all the thoughts of all the humans from different locations across the airwaves, and we're just forming opinions on something. They'd go, woohoo! So if that is not hard to believe, why is it hard to believe that for millions of years, the energies of a horse and this horse of hers that ran together to live, that they haven't formed a way of communication that is beyond sight, beyond feeling. And it happens in a place that we can't see and sometimes we can't feel. Some people can. If you clear your chakras, you can connect with that feeling. That same iPhone we were talking about happened in the imagination. And if somebody said, what, what do you mean imagination? Well, I visualize things. What does that mean? I see pictures in my head. Well, how do pictures form? Well, you get these little brain things called nerves and some chemicals come together and they set up a little shock and there's enough of those little electrical impulses create an image. And I see the images. And then by forming the images, I can actually bring it together and think about the images of somebody else. And they think about images in their head. That's not hard to imagine, is it? So can it be hard to imagine that these creatures who run together and the energy of them standing outside in the cold at night, year after year, for millions of years, coming together to survive as one, don't have something to offer us? That's the gift. That's the woohoo. The woohoo is not any more woohoo than go to meeting or Skype or your iPhone. That's not woohoo. 
So horses have something very real and very practical. We can't see it, they have it. It is a collective consciousness, that's the words we're using. It is an energy field. And our job, as Wendy talks about, is to clear our energy. She uses the word chakras. Clearing our energy so we can connect here. And if we can connect here, we can offer that to the client. And then we can bring the client into this collective consciousness. Wendy, thank you so much for the chakra clearing, telling people to ask permission, telling people to ask for the horse's opinion. Don't drink, grab the horse, put it on the halter, bring it over there. Let the horse, the horse come over of its own free will. Then it's offering its equine gifts. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Jennifer, bringing Wendy here. And all of you who are watching this, you can watch this interview or listen to this interview for the next 48 hours by going to horsesnowayhome.com slash healing, downloading the interview, or you can buy the entire 30 interviews that of the people Jennifer has put together of experts using horses to help humans at horsesnowayhome.com slash healing. And remember, ask your own opinion. Ask your own permission. Give yourself permission to live this magic as facilitators. Thank you.